FifthRoundMovement.com. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about the Jerky Boys. Now, if you don't know about the Jerky Boys, I suggest as soon as this episode's over, you go out, you either get on the internet, or if you can find the record store, go to one of those, pick up any one of their first five CDs, and just sit and laugh your ass off. Um, but if you, do, if you don't know about the Jerky Boys, what they did in the early and mid-90s, they released a series of, of prank calls on CDs and tapes that uh, were so groundbreaking and kind of set the bar so high and really set the, set the groundwork for that the kind of comedy where the comedian and the people that are in on the joke do something funny and then the responses of the other people that are you know not in on the joke is sometimes better than what the comedian did. So I think the Jerky Boys laid the groundwork for shows like Tom Green, Jackass, Punked, things like that that went on to be huge hits and the Jerky Boys kind of get left out of that conversation a little bit more than they should. Now the thing about the Jerky Boys, they didn't invent prank calls. They've been around probably as long as phones been around, you know, a kid would call a grocery store, hey, do you have olive oil in a can? Well, you better let her out, Popeye's getting mad. But the Jerky Boys took this concept to a whole nother level. They would keep people on the phone for four or five minutes at a time. They would just curse insanely. They would have full characters. Um, and they would just they would go to any length to upset the person they were talking to. They would just press their buttons to the point where the person freaked out and hung up, but not before that person said some funny stuff themselves. But the lengths they would go to was incredible. They would, they would call lawn ads. They would they played a tuba in one in one one of my favorite sketches. Um, they would place ads in newspapers so people would call them, and they really raised prank calling to an art form. My first experience with the Jerky Boys came the day before the last day of my freshman year of high school. My man Iceberg had a bootleg copy of the cassette tape. We listened to the first side of the tape at his house, and I was laughing so hard and so overcome with laughter at what I was hearing. I had to take the tape out, and we had to walk down the street to my house so I could calm down, catch my breath, and then go enjoy the second half of this just amazing cassette tape of comedy. And I thought if I didn't take a break before the second half started, I might have an aneurysm or a heart attack. And that's an odd fear for an otherwise healthy 15-year-old. But that's how funny this tape was, and that's how hard the Jerky Boys hit me. I, I want to start off by giving credit where it's due for this analogy. But to the, uh, the Masters of None podcast, those guys said a while ago that the Jerky Boys, in a lot of ways, are the first viral video. And if you think about it, it really was because before they put it out on a label with you know either cassette tapes or CDs, and you could buy them in stores, there were there were bootleg tapes that went around that everybody kind of had and passed hand to hand. Like, oh, you got to hear this. This stuff is so funny. The first Jerky Boys album came out in 1993. It was kind of like a best of of their bootleg tapes that have been circulating for a couple of years. It came out on a label, you could buy it in the stores, and it was just it was groundbreaking for a bunch of different reasons. The number of characters they did, how long the calls were, and uh, you know, the level of profanity they used at the time was different than anything else out there. So it was really just an amazing first album, and it really turned people on to what prank calls could be, and how funny this stuff could be when it was done right. Second Jerky Boys album came out in the summer of 94. A lot of people are disappointed by it. Personally, I think there's a lot of good calls on there, but they didn't really break from the formula of the first one. Same characters, uh, same basic premise of them calling other people, and they kind of took a couple calls to the next level. They were a little bit longer. Some people thought they were drawn out. Personally, I think Jerky Boys 2 was a quality album, but most people view it as the weakest of their collection. In 95, the Jerky Boys did a movie. Uh, I love the Jerky Boys, but what they did didn't really lend themselves to the movies as well as it did the tapes. I got a fire beans coming out of my ass. Backwards. 
Right after the movie in the summer of 96, the Jerky Boys came back with their third album. And this one, they really took their game to the next level. What they did was instead of just calling other people, they placed ads in newspapers so people could call them, you know, looking for Civil War memorabilia, stuff like that. And then they introduced some new characters. They introduced big old badass Bob the Cow Rustler, who in my opinion, they didn't use nearly enough. He was a great character. But uh, Jerky Boys 3, they were really back on their game and really hitting on all cylinders. In the fall of 97, they released a Jerky Boys 4, which I think a lot of real hardcore Jerky Boy fans accept as being their best album. It was really the best of what they did on the first, second, and third album. A ton of different characters. You know, calls were a little bit longer, more involved. And they did the thing where they placed ads and people called them and they called other people. So it was really like they really hit their stride and maybe their peak creatively. Is Eric the Plow Tune guy? Yeah, the button up. In 1999, the Jerky Boys released their fifth and final album together. It was technically called Stop Staring at Me, but a lot of people refer to it as the Jerky Boys 5. Um, it was a great album, a ton of great skits, a ton of great characters, and they really did their first epic prank call, the Thousand Chicken Trilogy, where they call the same people three times in a row with probably you know, well over 20 minutes if you listen to it all the way through. But it was really it was a great album, and unfortunately their last album together... By the time the 2000s came in and, and cell phones and the internet and things, technology kind of changed, you know, prank calls are kind of used as a thing of the past. And if you look at the Jerky Boys as kind of like an artifact of the 90s, what they did was amazing and they deserve probably way more credit than they get for being one of the funniest things of that whole decade. Call me.